this is the story of how I learned that I have skin cancer and what happens next. Before I get started, so I'm not leaving everyone in suspense, the doctors have given me no reason to worry that this is life-threatening. It's just something that I need to have cut out. I debated for a long time whether or not this was something that I wanted to talk about, but... <sighs> the reason that I really wanted to share this story is because I feel like there's a temptation to compare your life to people's lives that you see on social media. But you have to remember no matter what someone is sharing, it's a curated highlight reel of what that person wants you to see, whether it's good or bad. And there's a lot that's happening behind the scenes that you're never going to see. And this is one of those things for us that's been going on for a long time that we haven't publicly shared. Plus, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a bandage and a big bald spot on the back of my head and that's not something I wanted to have to hide. Kara would appreciate me turning on what she calls the twinkle lights. <sighs> This story starts back in 2018, which if you know anything about cancer, you know that a story that starts three years ago is not a good thing. At that time, we were traveling around some remote parts of Southeast Asia, and I noticed that I had a scab on my head that wouldn't heal. At that point in time, I was worried that it was a parasite. So when we traveled back to the US to speak at a conference, I'd scheduled an appointment with a dermatologist. And the dermatologist told me that it was an infected hair follicle. Well, two years later, that spot on my head still hadn't healed, and after a lot of pleading from Kara, I went back to the dermatologist earlier this summer. I knew I needed to go, but I was also reluctant because I knew if I went, they would cut my head open. And when I went, that's exactly what they did. They cut my head open to do a biopsy. Don't do that. You're not the one that has to get your head cut open. <laughs> Give me fun. When I was at my appointment, the doctor seemed convinced that it was cancer, so that's fully what I expected to hear when we called to get the results of my biopsy. Are you going to be okay no matter what this is? Mm -hmm. Thank you for calling Dermatology. For biopsy results or to speak with our clinical staff, press 2. For lupus aesthetics, Hey, this is Nate Buchanan. I'm calling for biopsy results. Their report came back in a benign lesion. They are suspicious that it could still be a skin cancer, so they're wanting to have you back for a follow-up to do a deeper biopsy just to make sure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Well, that would be better than expected. Yeah. I'm still not, still don't feel 100% great about it. The fact that they weren't like, stop everything and get in here and let us get this cancer out of your head because it's taking over your body. But that's what I thought was gonna happen just now. Yeah, it's weird that they wanna do another biopsy. I mean, I see how they would wanna be sure because it looks terrible. Okay, uh, well. I'm so relieved. Good, I guess. So after a crazy month of adventures, we drove back to Nashville for my second biopsy. That was a couple weeks ago, and last week we got this call. Just give us a call back, extension for us, Evan, thank you. I'm either away from my phone. Hey, my name is Nate. The number you dialed is not a valid extension. The number you dialed is not a valid extension. Oh. Not a valid extension. Well, you have reached Amanda with the most surgical department. Hey Amanda, this is Nate Buchanan. Hey Amanda. I'm calling about my biopsy results. Okay, let's see. So the spot there on the scalp came back as a basal cell. So it is a type of skin cancer. They're very slow growing. They don't metastasize, but they are recommending you have it treated. Well, I'm sorry, cancer. Mm. <laughs> I hate needles shots. Yeah. It's okay. Doing hard things makes you stronger. It's not really the type of hard things we've been into <laughs> lately. You feel okay about it? Mm -hmm. Are you concerned? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to be strong for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. You sure? Mm -hmm. Can't tell. <laughs> 
It's fine. I mean, she said it's fine. We'll see what WebMT has to say about no, it. I don't do that. Up until this point, I haven't been given any real reason to worry outside of just like having to have the surgery and that doesn't sound fun. So yeah, I've just kind of been doing my best not to think about it. And if something happens today and there is a reason to worry about it, we'll, we'll worry about it then. What I'm most worried about at this point is just being a wait for the surgery. So you don't go under for this. They just numb the spot and you're awake while they cut it out, which kind of makes me want to throw up just saying that. The good news is filming this video this morning has kept me busy and it's kept my mind off of it. I think I'm the youngest one in here by 20 years. Hi. Hi. You get the Young Patient of the Day award. <laughs> You're gonna do great. Yeah, thanks. I'll go ahead and numb the area. Just pretend like you're at the dentist. I don't like the dentist either. <laughs> in just a minute, the surgeon's gonna come in and perform what they call Mohs surgery. They basically will go in, take out as much as they can, take it straight to the lab on site and test it. And then they'll make the decision on whether or not they got it all or if they need to go back in for more. You did so good! So we're gonna mummy up to Halloween ready. Are you gonna go around my chin? <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. Well that's a good thing I told you about this. I think it would have been kind of hard to hide. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I can get this off. <laughs> Here, let me get it. Let me get it. What an experience. It was way faster than I thought it was going to be. I don't think they numbed the whole thing. And the smell of burning skin was gross. But besides that, it was great. You didn't even pass out. You only yelled at her once. Ow, gosh. I felt everything that was going on right there. I think in my mind, it was going to be just like a little bit more serious biopsy. It was so much more than that. So hopefully they got it all on the first try. And if so, then this waiting time will only be about an hour. We'll come back. They'll... I think they like actually pull my skin together. You get a facelift. <laughs> no more wrinkles. They'll just pull it all back. All right, let's go get some lunch. Is this mm. them? Hello? I just wanted to let you know that you are all clear. Uh, if you are grabbing lunch or whatever, that's fine. Take your time. It's going to be a minute before we have a room for you. But if, you know, you want to head back in maybe an hour or so. Thank you for calling. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> <laughs> Stayed strong for me all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew that this was not a super serious cancer and that it was under control and everything was more than likely going to be fine. But I just can't help but worry a little bit about the unknown. But I was reminded of a quote by Nate's grandfather that he says all the time, good health is a crown on a well man's head that only the sick can see. It just like was a really good reminder that we've been really fortunate and really blessed with our health, especially with all the crazy stuff we've done the last six years that we haven't had to do anything like this. We haven't even gone to the hospital. And so I think moving forward, we really, really aren't going to take that for granted now that we know, you know, what could happen. I'm just really thankful, not only for Nate's cancer to, you know, be gone officially, but just for our health in general. We're going to make the most of it. I think I ate too much for lunch. Oh no! We didn't really think that through. That is, uh, it's quite the bandage job. They stitched me up and sewed me back together. Right now it just feels like I have like a, a really tight ponytail on top of my head and the doctor said my head would hurt really bad for the next few days. But besides that, I think today went as smooth as we could have hoped. And I'm cancer free. And I still just 
feel weird about this entire situation. Like I've been looking for words to, to do word things and they're just not doing that right now. We'd like to say a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. We've been dealing with Nate's diagnosis behind the scenes for months now, and it's really been weighing on us, but you had no idea what was going on. And there are millions of other people in the world facing unexpected problems too. So if you're watching this and feel like you're alone in your struggles, please know that you are not alone and it is totally okay to not be okay. Everyone's got issues, and we think therapy is such an awesome tool that we want to play a part in normalizing. Therapy is awesome. BetterHelp is just like traditional therapy, but it's more affordable, and the best part is it's all online. If you signed up today, wherever you are in the world, you can start speaking to a professional within 48 hours. When you make an account, you take a short quiz, and they'll match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can talk to them on the phone, schedule weekly video chats, and instant message them anytime you want, 24-7. So if you're ready to join over a million people taking charge of their mental health, you can get 10% off your first month by going to our link betterhelp.com forward slash k and n that's better h-e-l-p when the doctor saw our camera she <laughs> asked us to ask you to wear spf all the time if you're going to be in the sun for a long time wear a hat and don't forget your ears she said they cut ears off all the time <laughs> now it's time to go to canada